Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of X-Ray Education. I uh, wanted to send out a special uh, thank you for all of you that have subscribed to the channel. I much appreciate it. I noticed I have quite a few people subscribed uh, from outside the United States. Great. You know, just so happens that people all over the world need x-rays. So, um, you know, hopefully the information that we provide here on our channel is going to be beneficial to, um, you know, people cross-cultural. And sorry, I'm mono lingual. I don't really speak any other languages. Um, hablo poquito espanol, but that's about it. Um, so anyways, I'm uh, going to get on with our experimentation for today. Um, today I wanted to show you guys something called the nine penny test. Now there's a concept in radiography. It's uh, light field and x-ray beam congruence. Uh, congruence just means that they're in agreement. Now it just so happens that x-rays and light obey the same laws to some extent as far as uh, diverging path. You know how if you shine a, a flashlight against something really close it's like super bright and a nice tight beam but then if you shine your flashlight against a far wall it's going to be all spread out. X-rays do the exact same thing and they follow basically the same kind of uh, linear diverging path that light does. That comes in really really handy for us. I'll show you why. Alright, so we have here just a generic x-ray tube and underneath the x-ray tube there is a device, that thing right there. We refer to that as a collimator. Now the collimator has a couple of dials and they control the longitudinal and the transverse width of the x-ray field. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my light this is my positioning aid light and as you can see it casts a, a light rectangle down on the table. Oh and it also comes uh, complete with this red alignment beam. What that allows me to do is line up my bucky tray with my light field. So just going to kind of move that thing over like so. Okay now everybody's nice and aligned. But that was not what I really wanted to show you. See that light field, and it just went off, is adjustable. I can make it wider or more narrow, and I can make it long or short, relative to the table that is. Okay, now whenever I take an x-ray, if I have this thing uh, coned down to a 9 by 9 field, okay, which is right there it is, okay, this is supposed to be 9 inches by 9 inches. When I make my x-ray, my x-ray should be exactly 9 by 9 inches. If it's not, then that means that there's a mismatch between my collimated field and my actual x-ray beam. Let's go into the Energized Lab. So, here is an ordinary American one cent piece, also known as a penny. And as you can see from my little ruler here, the diameter of that penny is almost exactly two centimeters. And it just so happens that one of the standard distances that we use in radiography is a distance of one meter. Um, one meter is a hundred centimeters. It's also approximately 40 inches. So a lot of times in x-ray we just say, you know, we're using a 40 inch SID. In reality, what we're using is a 1 meter SID, uh, 100 centimeters. And it's not too much of a stretch to say that 2 centimeters is 2% of 100 centimeters. Okay, you guys can check my math on that and make sure that I'm not just yanking your chain. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I've got a CR cassette right here. This happens to be a Fuji CR cassette, but you could use any one. I don't recommend doing this experiment with DR systems because DR systems do not allow you to do something called a double exposure. The double exposure for this experiment works really nice, and I'll show you why in just a minute. First things first, though, what we're going to do is we're going to collimate down to, I don't know, like a 8x6 rectangle, something along those lines, 
And this test is referred to as the nine penny test. And the reason it's called the nine penny test is because it requires the use of nine pennies. You could get by with eight, but I usually use nine. Okay, so here's the setup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pennies together like this so that each pair of pennies, there's one inside the collimated field and one outside the collimated field. And my margin of error for this experiment is 2%. So as you may recall from just a few minutes ago, 2% of my SID here is going to be simply 2 centimeters or 20 millimeters, however you want to think of it. And, okay, it looks like somebody has absconded with my last penny. No, wait, here one is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this penny right here in the lower right-hand corner. That will serve as an orientation for us so that whenever we look at our image, we can invert it, you know, flip it, however we need to orient it so that we know, okay, this edge is close to the door, this is at the cathode end of the tube, this is the anode end, and this is against the far wall. Okay, so let's make that exposure. You guys hang out in here. This is a camera, so it's really immune to x-ray, so you get to be in the room while the exposure is being made. We don't usually get to hang out with the patient during the exposure. Okay, so what I've done is I've made an exposure, uh, 55 kVp at one mass. Now what I'm going to do is expand this field out so that it encompasses all the pennies. And I'm going to make another exposure. So this is going to be my double exposure. Okay, double exposure accomplished. Now let's head out to the reader and see what we've got. All right, so into the reader with our CR. And now we have our image coming up on the screen. Let me just kind of zoom in here a little bit so you can see better. One of the unfortunate things about this particular software is it does not include any software measuring tools. Um, so I would have to send this image over to PAX and then um, you know, manipulate it there. But for our purposes, I think this will be fine. Okay, so if we're looking at the, far, the edge that was against the far wall, remember this is a double exposure. So we're going to have a dark inner area that was exposed twice. And then we're going to have a lighter outer area that was only exposed once. So effectively this inner uh, square, okay well it's approximately square, the inner square was exposed to two mass and then the outer square was exposed to one mass and then we have this white area outside that wasn't exposed at all. But we're not going to worry about masking that off because for our purposes all we need is to be able to see how far off we are on any given side. Now, according to my little experiment here, against the far wall, I'm off by about three millimeters. At the anode end of the tube, I'm off by maybe two millimeters. Towards the door, I'm off by about four millimeters. And at the cathode end of the tube, I'm off by about five millimeters. Okay, so I'm allowed to be off by 20 millimeters on any given side. Okay, so I'm gold. I'm off by at most five millimeters on one side. Now here's something else that uh, sometimes, this is in the book, you can look it up, um, but sometimes we kind of uh, neglect to mention this, but I want to go ahead and say it now. 
Um, if you total up all of your discrepancy, so we've got like 5, 4, that's 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've got a total of 14 millimeters of variation, right? We're allowed to be off if we, if we total up all of our um, discrepancy, that can be as much as 40 millimeters or 4 centimeters, but it can be no more than that. If your variation totals more than 4 centimeters, you need to call for service. And if you're off by more than 20 millimeters on any given side, you also need to call for service. Now, hang on just a second, and we're going to have a little bit more discussion before we wind this up. All right, so what have we learned? We're allowed to be off by two centimeters on any given side. We're allowed to be off by no more than four centimeters total, including all four sides of the collimated field. Now, why would we possibly be off at all? You know, how come this thing isn't exact like it was the day it was installed? Well, over the course of time, um, some people, and you may have noticed this in your own clinical practice, some people are not exactly gentle with this equipment. You know, they'll grab it and just spin it around, you know, and slam it into the wall. All kinds of stuff can cause the mirror, because there's a mirror inside the collimator that has to be canted at exactly a 45 degree angle. If that mirror's angulation is off in any direction, then so will your collimator, um, your collimator light field is going to be off. Um, that mirror can get damaged. I've actually seen a mirror broken before. Um, that definitely requires repair right away. Um, so just normal wear and tear over the course of time can wind up causing your collimated field to be off. Now if your collimated field is off, what does that mean? Well, when you're shooting foot x-rays, for example, you may inadvertently clip off the patient's toes because you know you had your light field open but your collimated field is actually smaller than you thought it was. The x-ray field doesn't match with the light field. So it can wind up causing you to have repeat x-rays and that's no good for you or the patient. So be aware of what each one of your x-ray rooms can do and make sure that they are all in line with our specifications. In other words, they're all within 2%. And if you have access to pennies, or any other device that happens to be um, 20 millimeters in diameter, then you can do this test on your x-ray rooms and you can figure out if those things are incongruence or not. Um, all right, so that's it for this episode of X-Ray Education. Thank you very much as always for your kind attention. And uh, yeah, get out there, take care of your patients, shoot some good x-rays. I'll be talking to you all later. All right, bye.